Welcome to the land, your best sports betting show. A little three and two in the W on Tuesday night here. Nice little one unit profit. Didn't have time to update the records in the video, but check out the description. And that is where everything is fully updated for you guys. Also in the Discord. Want to make sure you know that at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, going to be going live with Daft Previews to go ahead and check out a few more bets in addition to the ones I'm bringing you here and in the Discord as well. So definitely tune in to that 6.30 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday. Also, one reminder that I did partner with WAP.com, and I'm going to be bringing you guys my picks via WAP moving forward starting this Friday. Why that's important, if you want to continue to be able to get those picks and you want them at a discounted price, I would jump in the Discord now. Anybody who is in the Discord on Friday, when this all goes live of this week, September the 13th, 50% off the first three months. So definitely get in there now. Get that discount on Friday if you want to get ahead and get in those uh, onto WAP.com and follow all the plays that I'm making there. Still going to be bringing you the YouTube videos. Got plenty of analysis and content that'll be coming out for free no matter what. But if you want the full extent and the plays to the full extent that I'm making, especially getting them early so you make sure you get the same number, I would definitely make sure to check that out on the Discord and eventually WAP.com starting this Friday. All right, let's get into what I've got here for Wednesday. Everything you need is in the description of the video, link to the Discord and all that, so make sure you jump in there. But let's get into the game of the night, and this is a game of games for sure, because we've got the Aces in Indiana facing the Fever, the Red Hot Fever. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a second, but look at the way that these matchups now look, right? Because the Fever were not this good even two, three weeks ago. They have been on a complete surge, which is a big reason why they now have the third best offensive rating in the league. The Aces still doing their thing on offense, second best in the league there. It's the defense that is going to do the fever in. And the reason that I don't think anybody's really taking them seriously as a contender, just a lot of fun to be watching this Caitlin Clark hike, but their defense is abysmal. Second worst in the league. The Aces have been a lot better on defense over the course of the last 10 games since they came back from the Olympic break. They're now up to fifth in defensive rating. They went into the break eighth. So they've jumped up to about second best over the course of the last 10 games and have really ramped things up on defense, which has helped them a ton. They are still second in pace. The Fever are third in pace now. They have been playing at the fastest pace since we've come back from that Olympic break. We'll talk about that more in a second. And the Fever have become a rebounding team. They are now sixth best, and the Aces still struggle there. Really, it's mostly Asia who's doing all the rebounding for them. They are ninth in terms of their rebound percentage, and both these teams shooting exceptionally well. The Fever have been insane. First overall now in terms of their effective field goal percentage on the season. It's because what that's what they've been doing incredibly well for the past couple weeks. Tough for me to pick a winner here, but I would definitely lean a lot closer to the Fever as dogs at home than I would to the Aces on the road here. Here's what I mean about this Fever squad since we came back from the Olympic break. First in offensive rating. First in terms of, of effective field goal percentage, best shooting team in the league easily. Third in rebound percentage, which is huge because they were at about seventh or eighth for a large part of the season, and they've bumped this thing up to third best in the last two weeks. Best of uh, tops in pace, anyway, fastest team in the league and the most made threes, which is something that I feel like we've been waiting to say about this team for a while. Uh, CC's finally broken out. Kelsey Mitchell has been completely unlocked. Uh, even Alyssa Smith hitting a couple. So there's good reason to believe in this offense moving forward. Also got to talk about the backcourt here because Mitchell and Clark have been damn near unstoppable along uh, to lead this team to an eight and two record in their last 10 games. So just to be clear, they have been doing it as a team, best record in the league in, uh, in the last 10. But these two are the driving force, right? Backcourt bullies. You got CC, third in points, first in threes made, first in assists over the course of the last two weeks as they've gone eight and two. Kelsey Mitchell, second in points, third in threes made, fifth in attempts. She's all over, but they're looking for her. But also, she's getting her own shot as well. Has had a couple good free throw shooting games as well. So, I mean, look, it's just the driving engine between these two teams. For, for this team, I should say, are these two players. Now, let's keep in mind, the Aces are very good at defending guards. The only place they're really weak at is defending forwards. So it's not like they don't have the weapons and the players to be able to limit what they want to do between Jackie Young. Uh, obviously, we've got uh, Gray, Chelsea Gray. Uh, and then also, we've got plenty of Kelsey Plum getting some steals and leading the break. So they have the weapons to, to limit the indie weapons here. So keep that in mind. And that is a good reason for my first bet. Why did I tell you how good Kelsey Mitchell's been if I'm just going to go under? That's kind of why, because I'm going under in part because we're getting a really high number. 21 and a half points, 
for her. We're taking that under here. Best number is at minus 132 on FanDuel. And I mean, look, like she's averaging 19 and a half on the season. She's just been on a tear for the last 10 games. Good for her. She has to come back down to earth at least a little bit. And this would be the team to do that against. The Aces allow the fewest points off of screens. And they are uh, tops in spot up uh, defense as well, right? About third best when it comes to limiting opposing spot up shooters. That's Kelsey Mitchell to a T right there. She's going to come off screens. She's going to come off of the spot up and try to get those shots off of a pass, probably from Caitlin Clark. The other areas that they're really good uh, in terms of the Aces defense, third best limiting free throws, fourth in transition. Those four things I just mentioned, spot up, off screen, free throw, and transition. That's how Kelsey Mitchell gets her points. This is a very good defense at limiting that stuff. They limit guards to the third fewest points as well. So if they're going to run her off the line and not give her those open threes, once she gets into the paint, she's not nearly as effective. That's why you see she's gone under in 10 of 14 when she plays the top four paint defenses in the league, which is what you should consider this Aces squad who do not give up points when you try to get down low on them. So we're going to fade the sizzling red hot Kelsey Mitchell in this one uh, and take her under 21 and a half points. I do think there's correlation that Caitlin Clark is likely to go over on her points in this one, but I'm not, I, I really think the Aces are going to use this game to really pump themselves up and come in and try to do a little bit better. They're only six and four in their last 10. That also just transfers right into Asia Wilson. I think she's going to bring it once more. We've seen a lot of star players that are opposing Caitlin Clark go off to sort of show, look, I'm a veteran in this league. I'm a dominant player. You might be the new what's hot kind of thing right now but you still have to contend with me, right? So that's where I'm, I'm at with Asia in this one. If you look at the two games that she's played against this team, 28 and a half points per game, went over both times, 25 for 40 from the field for about 62 and a half percent field goal percentage. She is talking, she's playing a defense that is in the bottom uh, half of the league in terms of paint defense for the fever. And that's really what matters. When she's played the bottom six teams in the league, in terms of limiting points in the paint, she's averaged nearly 30 points a game and has gone over an 18 of 23. And I think that holds true here against this Fever squad, which gives up the sixth most. So they're right on the cusp, but they are a team that gives up points in the paint. And that's where Asia Wilson is going to dominate. The other areas that Asia is probably going to be able to get hers. Indy allows the second most free throws and they allow the most versus spot up. Two ways that Asia definitely loves to get her points. <coughs> Three, two, one. Lastly, when it comes to the post up and defending transition, the other two ways that Asia gets all her points, they're in the bottom three, right, in the league for the Fever. So they don't have the weapons to defend Asia. That's been the case in the first couple games. Uh, and we're going to take her to continue to be on the tear that she does, tends to be on when she plays teams that can't limit points in the paint. Second game on the slate, a little bit less interesting. Two teams not destined for elongated seasons this year. We've got the Mystics sitting in 10th, the Sky. They're going to be without Angel Reese, obviously, out for the season. They're sitting in 8th in the league right now. Both these teams really similar in a lot of ways, to be honest. Pretty good down low, not very good guard play. That's going to be the case in this game, I would imagine, once again, even without Angel Reese, right? The rebounding is the one area that you might be worried about the Mystics. Uh, they're second worst in terms of the rebound percentage, and the Sky are the best rebounding team in the league because they had Angel Reese, who is not there anymore. So I'm not really as confident in their rebounding as a huge advantage anymore. In fact, I give the advantage down low to the Mystics. And that advantage is spelled out in my bets that I have for this game here. I'm not really worried too much. There's there's so much stuff here in terms of what's been different the last 10 games. Shakira Austin is out for this Mystics team. That's a big deal. Obviously, Angel Reese out for Chicago. And they don't have that much to play for. So I don't really care too much about the full season stats for these two. Even really don't care about the last 10 games in terms of the stats for these two. I care about the stuff I'm going to talk about here in the bets, though. So first one, Stephanie Dolson. Taking her to go over four and a half boards. It's a low number, and she's not the world's best rebounder for a big center, but she is good enough to get five boards in a game without Shakira Austin. So without Austin this year, she's hit this number in 16 of 22. Granted, she's had exactly five a good amount of times, so it makes you a little bit nervous. But at minus 114, we still get enough of an edge in this situation to take Dolson. She's also seeing three more minutes per game without Austin. So that's a big part of why you feel comfortable. She's going to be in there in the fourth quarter, as opposed to what would probably be the case if Austin was playing, right, and healthy. The other thing is, if you look at her without Austin, when she plays at least 26 minutes, she's gone over this in 15 of 16. I would argue you need to have her and uh, Aaliyah Edwards on the floor very consistently 
to really battle with Camila Cardoso, who's not too much worse than Angel Reese. Obviously, Reese proving how good of a rebounder is, but down low, Cardoso is a formidable foe as well. Still, that's only going to mean that we need Dolson in there for a little bit more time. And overall, to centers, this Chicago team doesn't really limit rebounds. Like, Angel Reese got a lot of rebounds, but she didn't really limit others from getting rebounds, if that makes sense. Like, they're not very good at limiting their opponent rebounds. It's just that Angel Reese was getting a ton of boards. She's not in there now. Plus, they're already bad at limiting centers in terms of getting their boards. So we're going to take Dolson to bang down low. She's been doing really, really well and really surprised a number of people as uh, with how well she's been rebounding this season compared to the, most of the rest of her career. Final play I've got, we're going with Camila Cardoso under. And it's the points. It's not the boards. I'm not touching the boards here. But the 12 and a half points going under on those, minus 102. So I think we're getting a really good number here. I know we are. And the reason is, is that she scores 79% of her points inside of five feet. Washington is the second best defense limiting player scoring inside of five feet. You might be worried that they don't have Shakira Austin in, who's one of the best down low defenders in the league, but they haven't had her in for very many games. Like she's played like 20 full games. I don't even know if it's that many for her this year. It's like fewer than 20 full games. Like she's been in there for about 20 to 22. She hasn't even been playing that many minutes though because she can't really stay on the floor, which is a tragedy. She's one of my favorite players in the league, but it doesn't matter that she's not in there. These the statistics for the, the Mystics down low, which is the only thing they're good at defending down low, that's what they've been good at all season with or without Austin. You look at the way that they defend the post up and putbacks, that is what Carmela Cardoso needs to rely on. She's not gonna really uh, come at you off the dribble in any way. She's not standing on the three point line and driving to the basket. That is not her game. She's camped down low and that's perfect for the Mystics defense, which is good at defending that exact type of player. They give up uh, the fifth fewest post up points and the third fewest putback points. The one game that we saw Cardoso play without Angel last game, four of nine, 10 points. And that was against Dallas, who gives up the most points inside of five feet in the league. So if she's not going to be good against a team that hemorrhages points to their opponent inside five feet, I certainly don't think she's going to be better against a team that limits teams from scoring that exact spot. And if you look at her with 30 plus minutes, because we can't just look at her on the season and go, OK, how, how many times has she gone over or under this number? Because she's only played one game without Angel, but she has played 30 minutes plenty of times this season. They, they ran her out there with Angel Reese plenty of times. Uh, and in the games that she's seen 30 plus minutes, she's gone under this number in 14 of 16, averaging nine points. Not good enough to get the 13 that she would need here. So this is my most confident bet, and it's at pretty much even money. So love the Cardoso under 12 and a half points. And that is all the time that I have for you. One more reminder, jump into that Discord. Make sure that you don't miss out on the ability to get 50% off all the plays that I'm putting out here starting this Friday. Also, last reminder, 6.30 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday. Going to be going live with DAP previews. Looking at a few more bets. You guys bring your bets. Jump in the comments. We'll take a look at those and see what we like. And until I see you all next, happy betting.